lovely little slice of stace and berry for your day. My chair has just started squeaking like like there's a fucking mouse in it. What are you doing? Oh, like, like, it's so loud. Yeah, there, there genuinely... one is there. Right there, a little mousey clogs on. Right in my chair. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a musical episode today, everyone. It's horrible. <laughs> Stay some Barry the musical. <laughs> Stay some Barry, they're doing a song for you because they love you and... No, I've run out of steam. Or... Hey, Bob, at last... <laughs> We see each other plain, Monsieur Le Maire, you'll wear a different chain. Are you doing an actual song from an actual musical? That that was my performance from um, Les Miserables, which obviously I... Was I yeah, yeah, I've, I've been on that. You know uh, that. What have I been on? I've uh, I've done I've done I've done a Greece once. I played Jan, unsurprisingly, because she's got really big poofy hair and giant front teeth. Uh, and I was in what's the other one? I was in Cats once. Except I wasn't really any of the cats. I was just prowling around in the background. You just walk. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Get I was just like you know. Walk on the stage. No, I was just, I was one of the cats that didn't really get a song. So I just, I'm doing it now, but nobody can see. I just sort of prowled around a lot in the background and occasionally like pretended to lick the back of my hand and then rub my face with it. Did you have like, to wear yeah, a cat suit? Cleaning myself like a little kitty. Well, it wasn't a cat suit because uh, we were in like secondary school and they thought that would be a bit too risque. So it was like, it was essentially like furry trousers and a furry T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and it was very budget. It was terrible. Is this the show? I d- <laughs> it's not what Stacey and Barry talk about. <laughs> I've got a musical story which is worse than that. Go on. I so want to know do, it. Do you remember um, the, the old school song, which is The Changing Guards of Buckingham Palace? Christopher Robin went down with Alice. Have you heard this song? No, I don't think I have. Go and look it up, kids, afterwards. It's called The Changing Guards of Buckingham Palace. Anyway, at my school, I think it was primary school, they did a um, a production and basically um, there's a bit where you've got all the Queen's guards and they're supposed to all sort of walk in this lovely figure eight stuff and there was like a load of us and I was one of the lead guards and nice. I mean my outfit was shit it was basically red <laughs> crepe paper and they'd done like a little black funnel for my hat and I was supposed to lead everyone one way and never would go the other way anyway when and everyone came parents came to the show my, my folks were there which was a rarity and uh, yeah, I, I fucked it up completely. I completely lost where I was supposed to go, forgot where I was supposed to go. So instead of actually trying to take charge and go, do you know what? I'm just going to pick a pick a lane and just go. I just <laughs> sat down in the middle of the stage and started crying. Oh, that's amazing. That's the better wish. And oh, yet, is there video evidence? It didn't feel amazing at the time. It just felt no, I can so, imagine it. I once played the. Uh, the star in the Christmas in the nativity. So like the one that like leads everybody to the Jesus. Oh, an actual and, um, star. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I had to wear like a big white dress and basically hold up a pole over my head with a star on it, which seemed great. Uh, and I was like so happy about it because I was like, I am a main part, but I don't have to say any words. This is brilliant because I hated public speaking, even as a teeny weeny child. And so I do this thing where I come out from the side of the stage and I walk down through the audience and like, peppered throughout the audience there were like some of the kids who were playing like the wise men and like there was like a donkey and like all this other like bollocks and uh, and so I'm like going around and leading them all back up to the stage what I hadn't thought about was the fact that I then had to stand for like a good sort of 45 minutes at the back of the stage with both my arms in the air holding up this pole so like all (laughs) all of the videos that parents have of that is just uh, occasionally the star just sort of sort of falling slowly to the left. And then a panicked teacher's voice says, get the star back up, get the star back up. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, uh, it was a bit of a disaster, really. I also played uh, an alien in one of the nativities. So that goes to show you quite a lot about the schools I went to. Quite, quite a bit of range. Yeah, yeah. It feels like um, this is, this feels like actually Stace and Barry's musical musings. This feels like what it actually is. <laughs> I was just talking about different musicals <laughs> and how we fucked them up. 
do you know what I feel as well is I feel like uh people would hear the singing that we've done thus far and be like how were either of these within 10 foot of a musical <laughs> no, I don't think I've done anything that's warmed anyone to my voice right now but honestly when I try it's not bad I want to raise an endorsement it's not I'm, bad I'm, I reckon once this goes out give it a week or so and we'll get an email from Andrew Lloyd Webber saying yeah. he's, put, he's put together a new show it's about two geeks trying to do a radio show or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it would be called Stace and Barry's Musical Musings. Boom, get in. West End, <laughs> here we come, baby. I love it. I hope that there's a scene in it where there's like a panicked song about how we've tweeted something nice about a celebrity, but now it's just come out that they're actually a creep. And we're like, you know, damage control. <laughs> yeah. In my mind now, I can see a whole sequence where... It's they've got water pouring down like it's raining because I'm walking home because of what's happened and the celeb's going to sue us and I'm all sad. And then a microphone comes out stage, but it's actually someone dressed up as a microphone and it's um, let's say it's Will Smith because he's the only one I can think of. And mm. uh, he, he says, definitely do that, yeah, yeah. And he sort of says, "What you crying about, bro?" I'm like, "Well, Will Smith, microphone guy, you know, I would be in soon. I don't know what to do." And he's like, "Hey, man, I've got to rap for you." And he starts rapping. And then suddenly all these other microphones come on and then I start tap dancing and the whole sequence lasts for two hours, just that sequence. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm not anywhere near it because I don't want to (laughs) rap or tap dance, if I'm honest. It's all right, we'll get started. I'll I'll just prowl around in the background again, licking the back of my hand, but not dressed as a cat so people think (laughs) I'm genuinely insane. This has got to be (laughs) the longest intro we have ever done. It's the worst. I don't think I've even said the name of this podcast. (laughs) I don't think we've properly introduced us. This is Stace and Barry in the morning. And usually we're not this weird, but we've both gone a bit doolally this week. (laughs) I feel really... And, you know, if it's the first time time you're listening, welcome. (laughs) And goodbye. Enjoy. (laughs) Goodbye. Thanks for stopping by briefly. Yeah. You know that that meme from The Simpsons of, like, the granddad walking into the bar and then he puts his hat on and walks back out? (laughs) That's what this episode's going to be for a lot of people. (laughs) I love that sequence. That's such a brilliantly little animated sequence. Yeah. It's just like, oh, it's a brothel. Oh, no, there's Bart. (laughs) Off I go. Should we uh, should we just do a segment instead yeah. of carrying this on anymore? How about we do a musical music, an actual <laughs> musical music? Let's do it. Musical musings. Ah, jazz. Uh, do you want to go first, Dave? Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, my musical music. <sighs> Torn. I'll give a quick musical. Uh, oh, that's a really. <laughs> <Ooh>. um, <laughs> um, no, because uh, no, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. So my musical musing, I have picked uh, Obi Wan by John Williams, which is from the uh, television show, uh, which has been streaming on Disney Plus. Obi Wan, or as I like to call it, how Darth Vader fucks up a load of people for six episodes. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I mean, the only the only problem I've I've got with Obi Wan is nothing to do actually really with Obi Wan. I just wish they hadn't released it in the summer, because man, so many scenes in that show are so fucking dark, and all I could see was my own window <laughs> reflected back at me from the. T- I'm like, is there a fight happening? I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. There's my stupid face on the screen again. Fucking hell. Uh, I feel I feel better because it was it was quite dark. It's like someone turn on the lightsaber. I can't see. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wanted to. Get, so what I didn't realise is that John John Williams, who's kind of now talking about retiring. And to be fair, if anyone's earned their retirement, it's him. He's like ninety. In it though. But he's he still had time to do Indy Five. Get in, John. But he's kind of, he came back to do this because one of the things he said was is that he's done themes for with pretty much all the other major characters in Star Wars. Yeah. Um, but he's never done a theme for Obi Wan. Ah. Oh. And I sometimes confuse what I would think of as the Obi Wan theme with the theme which is actually for the Force. You know. Dun, 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 dun. You know. Yeah. I sometimes I think of Obi Wan. I think of that. So the fact he sort of came back just to do this special arrangement for Obi-Wan, I thought was brilliant. And I really, really, really loved this piece of music because 
when you sit down and listen to it along with all the other themes of the characters he's done, so like Luke's got a theme and um, Leia's got a theme, Han's got a theme, uh, Ray's got a theme. When you listen to them all, you, you, that's where you see just how good this guy is. I mean, we all know John, John Williams is good, but I mean, his stuff on Star Wars is just like another level. And one yeah. of the things I, I like about this is it really captures the fact that, you know, Obi-Wan's in a pretty dark place where we find him. I don't want to spoil it, you know, but he's got this, it starts with this really mournful trumpet solo, which feels kind of heartbreakingly sort of epic. And then it kind of, it just keeps building and building. It kind of uses that same motif over and over again through the song, but it just, it just works. And they use it quite a lot in the, the series, and I, but I never get tired of hearing it. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't think I've ever got tired of hearing anything by John Williams, if no, I'm honest. No, likewise, <laughs> to be fair. You'd think there'd be a dip in quality, wouldn't you, after all them years, but there just, there just isn't. No. I wish I, like, I, I, I really hope that if I happen to live to about 90 or whatever, I'm still good at, like, at least one thing. <laughs> I don't know what that thing will be, because I'm not sure I'm good at anything now, but, you know, we'll see. Probably be going on stage and just licking the back of your hand. Uh, yeah, by. pretending to be a cat. Yeah, just start. You just start crashing stage shows and just pretending to be a cat in the background. <laughs> I'm going to start doing it at random weddings as well. Just, just <laughs> crashing somebody's wedding photos. Just, just looking like a little, a little kitty cat. Yeah. That's so weird. Go viral. That is so weird. I don't, I don't want to go viral for being weird. I want to go viral <laughs> for doing something like legit good. Not because people are just like, hey, what's happening here? Are we watching a mental breakdown happen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, Obi-Wan. Yes, no, it is very good. Good pick, B. Thank you. Good pick. I am, um, my musical musing for this time is a bit of a spoiler, actually, for what my pick of the fortnight is, but I don't care. Um, okay. The uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge video game came out like just over a week ago I think now okay and the musical music that I picked is a is a little bit of music from that game and it's called Technodrome Redux um it's by now this is a name that in theory looks like it's really easy to say but I feel like could potentially be pronounced lots of different ways so I'm really sorry if I'm about to fuck it up but I think it's T Lopez because it's spelt first name T W. -E. That's got to be T, right? Maybe Tay? I don't know. Uh, and then the surname is L O P E S. Lopes? Lopez? I don't, I don't know. I'm really oh, sorry. Oh, so it could be T Lopes. Yeah, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but <laughs> who knows? But either way, dude's good at uh, at doing music for, for video games, eh? Um, I'll talk more about the game itself when I come to my pick of the fortnight. But um, the, the score to it, the soundtrack to it, as it were, um, is very sort of like reminiscent of like the old Turtles arcade games. Um, and it uses like themes from the 80s cartoon and themes from some of the arcade games and like jazzes them up a bit. Um, but it is so like, you know, <laughs> you know, when you get a game that's like very nostalgic for you anyway. So Shredder's Revenge is very sort of like, oh, God, it feels like I'm playing the Turtles arcade games. Right. Um, but then like the music as well, bring like it just makes you feel like a kid again. It's one of those. It is such a good soundtrack because it just you finish the game and you just feel like punching the air because you're like, yes, it's so turtlesy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the soundtrack is absolutely spot on if you ask me there's um there's a couple of like actual songs in there that really threw me and um, like one of them is by like ghostface killer which i was not expecting wow um and that's actually a really genuinely good song and then there's another one that's like a sort of old like almost like fart rock kind of like you know there's a panic in the sky na -na 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 -na. Like, <laughs> which, again i wasn't really expecting but i liked it a lot but Technodrome Redux is sort of more along the sort of uh, chip tune slash techno kind of lines, but it meshes so well with the actual level that it comes with. And just, yeah, it's just so much fun to listen to. It, it certainly makes your working day feel more productive when it constantly sounds like there's enemies coming at you. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought it's, it's so good. I love it. Yeah. Very sort of, video gamey chip tuney 
very fun, very nostalgic, 90s y, 80s y feel stuff. Yeah, brilliant. Nice. Yeah. I'm going to have to cave and put my fan on. My little fan tells me what temperature it is in this room, and it's telling me it's 24 degrees. I wonder, <laughs> yeah, my fan does. What is your fan like a little round? It's like a little tower thing. Okay, it's like a big, a big black tower, and at the top, it's like, did you know it's actually 24 degrees in here and you might melt? Yeah, oh, mine does the same thing. <laughs> How hot are you right now, B? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm I'm in a completely different room, so I'm, yeah. I'm kind of wedged in between some um, drying clothes, <laughs> living living the podcast, the millionaire lifestyle. No, and do your sound always sounds so good? So it's all muffled by all <laughs> muffled by dirt, by drying clothes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the perfect soundproofing. Yeah, who knew? Uh, oh, shall we do um, pick of a fortnight? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Pick of the fortnight. Hey, um, shall I do mine since I just sort of talked about it? <laughs> yeah, go on in. Shredder's revenge, eh? So here's the thing. A friend of ours texted us like a couple of Saturdays ago and he was like, did you know you could get Shredder's revenge on the Xbox for free if you've got Game Pass? And we were like, ha ha, what? So what? <laughs> what? So we went there and we did it and we got it. And we completed it in an evening. Uh, Rich was Raph and I was Donny. I'm always Donny because the great thing about being Donny is the range you get with a stick. I mean, your yeah. staff, so you yeah. poke people from afar. And then, <laughs> like, <laughs> you. I'm, uh, yeah, just thought you'd, uh, you'd, you'd like the sort of sound effects. So, like, I was very excited about playing this because I love the, t- you know me, I love yeah. the turtles. Uh, one of the things, one of the things that you can win as like an extra uh, extra character to play as is a playable Casey Jones, which was also very exciting to me. So I was like, we need to complete this game so that I can start hitting people with cricket bats, please. <laughs> uh, and we and we did it. The great the the thing that I like about this game is that I often have a hard time with like forty fight games because I don't remember combos. We've discussed this at length on various podcasts. I've got a shit memory. And so, like, for me, it is difficult enough to remember, like, this one's jump, this one is attack, (laughs) when it comes to (laughs) buttons on things. So that's why I struggle with a lot of video games, especially, like, the the newer sort of, you know, like, the new, like, Spider-Man game and stuff. Like, I just can't, I can't control it. It's too many buttons, too many triggers. I'm an idiot. I can't help it. I'm sorry. But this game I thought was great because it essentially had like the attack button and then that same button a few times in a row does a different thing and a few more times in a row does a different thing. And if you press it at the same time as the jump, you'll do an uppercut. So so all I needed to know was this one's attack and this one's jump and any sort of combo of those buttons, you'll hit something. (laughs) I love those because it's a a side scroller, I'm guessing. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. So it's... um. Yeah, it's very much like the old like arcade games, um, you know, having to like beat up a load of foot and a load of mouses and like you've got to fight, you know, Bebop and Rocksteady and uh, Ground Nut and like, um, oh, what's his name? What's the alligator who's got a Cajun accent and he goes, oh, I guarantee all the time. Yeah. Leatherhead, Leatherhead. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad you solved that one because... <laughs> <laughs> You'd have been like, what are you? Asian dinosaur? What is that? Is yeah, that oh, a yeah, fish or what? No, he's an alligator who oh, okay. stomps around going, I'll guarantee, like all the time. He, honestly, he says, I'll guarantee <laughs> he says so what? much. Uh, he's just, he, he just like, he'll tell you that, like, oh, I'm about to beat you up, I guarantee. Um, <laughs> it, it's mad, absolute madness. But, like, so the controls are great for me personally. The look of the game is absolutely gorgeous, spot on. Even though it's quite easy in the sense of like the buttons being, you know, space level of simple, it also has like a lot of like extra things you can collect or like sort of achievements you have to do throughout the levels to make those things a bit harder. Um, and obviously, it depends which turtle you play as to how hard it is because like playing as Raph, I think, is probably the hardest because he's got the least range. But there's some great like special moves that you can do. And uh, they've got the original four voices of the turtles from the 80s cartoon to do oh, the voices nice. in the game. So that's wonderful as well. 
and it was just like a big hug from like an old friend. <laughs> Is that really pathetic to no, say? No, not at all. Um, I was really chuffed when um, they brought. Uh, it was was it Streets of Rage? Oh, Streets of Rage Four. Yeah. Yeah. I, I lost my shit when that when that came out. That's I got loved. a good soundtrack as well, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. I must go back and play that actually. I love that game. Nothing nothing de stresses me more than a side scrolling beat em up. Oh, you've got to have a go on this if you can get yeah, hold of it. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even realise and it's on because I've got Game Pass, so Yeah. Um, what annoys me though is because I always go into Game Pass and it's not it doesn't sort of come up as much. Like no. No, we did. We only knew because our mate Key texted us, and he was like, "Guess who's fucking kicking all of the foot asshole right now?" And we were like, "What?" Yeah, no. <laughs> um, I'm, as soon as we're done here, <laughs> yes, I'm on it. Have a go. Which turtle are you going to be? Either be it will either be Donny or Leonardo. Yeah, you got to have the range of the stick or the katana, haven't you? Yeah, and it's just something more satisfying of either beating someone with a stick or, or beating someone with a sword. Uh, I'm, ho- yeah. I'm hoping the police aren't listening to this call. <laughs> There's nothing more satisfying than beating someone to death with a stick. It says Barry of Geek Syndicate fame. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Well, it's. I thought it was great fun and I had a real good time with it. There was only like... Once you get into the rhythm of some of the uh, some of the bosses as well, they're actually like really satisfying to do a murder on. But okay. I haven't I haven't played it on my own, so I don't know how difficult it is when you haven't got a very a very good Richard backing you up. <laughs> I shall let you know. Yeah, let me know. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's my pick of the fortnight. How about well, you? Well, my pick of the fortnight, which I shall uh, keep short, short, he says, is I had a couple of series I was going to pick, but. It's because I'm watching this trailer and what I've found is pretty much on a daily basis I'm watching this trailer and I've watched that trailer probably three times today. Mm-hmm. Um, part of it is because I love the music in the trailer like so much and clearly I'm not the only one because they released the music, came out this week on Spotify, which nice. I don't often see. Like Officially they released the music from the teaser trailer. So this is the teaser trailer for filming, which isn't out until next year. <laughs> right. And it's the new Mission Impossible film. Oh, OK. Dead Reckoning, part one. So this is going to be, I think, these two, when they come out, that will be it for the Mission Impossible franchise. OK. And regardless of whether you like the Mission Impossible films or not, you should go and watch the trailer for two reasons. <laughs> one, it is, it's, it's how you do a teaser trailer i.e. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what the film is about <laughs> other than the fact there's a lot of Tom Cruise chipping action, more action oh and did I mention Tom Cruise chipping on a horseback, mm-hmm. on a motorbike jumping off a motorbike, parachuting off a motorbike and beating guys up um, yeah that sounds pretty good The but for me the music so the music is in this trailer is done by Lorne Banff I'm sure I've said his Lorne Balf. Yeah, yeah Lorne Balf. yeah who did the mu- he's done the music for the previous film, which was really the, the soundtrack for that was quality. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was Mission Impossible Fallout. Um, yeah, so he's done the soundtrack for this teaser trailer. It is wicked. One of the best pieces of like music for this type of thing I've ever heard. It's just because he kind of takes that main. God, I'm going into music music now. He takes that <laughs> main theme for the uh, Mission Impossible films, which everyone knows. Even if you don't really watch the films, you're aware of what the theme sounds like, and and he makes it into this kind of epic, grand opus of like action. It's brilliant, brilliant. Nice. I can't stop watching the trailer. I know I've got to wait a year, so I'm trying to ration it myself. <laughs> it's not working. No. You're just gonna to have to like watch all the other ones. Is it like one a month or something that to is, help? Like that is my plan is to do is to do like a massive uh, MI rewatch. Mm. I might have to do that anyway because I think I've forgotten most of them except for Fallout. Was Fallout the one that had Henry Cavill recharging his arms in a toilet? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's the main <laughs> one. <I remember>. <laughs> <laughs> recharging his arms. <laughs> he does. He like cocks he does. his arms. Yeah, does he? Does. Like, yeah. oh, right here we go. I've tried to do that in the mirror and it doesn't work. No, when I do it, it just looks like a pair of noodles flapping in the breeze. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how he. I don't know yeah. if it's just because he's a big guy, but I've tried to do that and it just. I'm like, how do you do that? I don't. No. Yeah, I think I think it's the bigness and I think it's that sort of 
the pictorials help. Yeah. 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 I don't have either of those things. Really? I've got I've got noodly appendages and, and bazongas and that's all I've got to offer. Yeah. I'm sorry, world. Me too. Um, can I ask you a really quick question before we move on to the very last segment? Yes. Do you want to just tell everybody what you thought of RRR? <laughs> Oh yes! Do you know what? Right, <laughs> we're gonna move. We're gonna move the last segment to the next episode. Okay. <laughs> so it's just reminded. Now I'm choosing my words carefully because mm. um, I will be reviewing this with with uh, Dave or Geek Syndicate. But oh, I can't wait to hear that. But like, so yes, so ah, oh, which you had as a pick. Um, I did. It, did. Did you have it last episode? It was the last episode. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, I'm thinking back now. I remember now the the point in the last episode where I said I was going to watch this film, and it's when you said he throws a tiger at someone. Yeah, yeah, dude. And I said to myself, "This is a film I need to see." And <laughs> we finished recording. It, I don't know if it was straight afterwards or if it might have been the next day. Mm. And uh, you quite rightly said this is like a three-hour film. It's um, oh god, I want to say it's an Indian film, but I don't want to get nationality wrong. Um, is it Indian? I'm not sure. <laughs> I kind of want to say that too. I know the version that I saw was in Hindi because that's what they've got on Netflix. Yeah, but I don't think that's the original language it was in. Yeah, um, it's not. Yeah, I yeah when I saw it, it's not the. Um, it was in Hindi. Yeah. Um, but it's saying it's the Indian Tele- Telugu language. There you go epic uh, action drama the, the the words epic action drama does not do this film justice <laughs> not all. even a bit not even a bit i know people say this about films they go oh the three hours flew by the three hours blew fucking by i, I could have watched a whole other three hours more of this yeah. like yeah. obviously there was like i think I don't know if it was like it was the first 20 minutes. I must have paused it. 20 minutes had gone and I realised they hadn't even told me what the name of the fucking film was. <laughs> yeah. And then the way they tell me what the name of the film is, I'm like, oh my God, this is like the best film. And I kept thinking, <laughs> it can't get any better than this. It can't. The action cannot get all. Yes, it can. And then can. it does. And, and then it, it does. does. <laughs> and it got to, and I was, I was, um, I did, I live tweeted kids. Um, well, I didn't like tweet. I was just, I was just constantly sending you messages. As I was watching well, it. do you know what? I was having a really bad day that day, and so every time you sent me a message, and to be fair, most of your messages was just like a screenshot, and then like, <laughs> damn, or like, <laughs> fucking hell, and so like, you were absolutely making my day that day. <laughs> it, it was honestly, it was one of the most intense experiences I've had in, in a longer time. It made I mean, my like, day. Like, I don't know how to explain it to... Like, when I was trying to explain it to you, I was trying not to oversell, just in case. But then I was like, I don't think I can. I think this film is that good and that, like, insane that I can't even prepare you for how insane... <laughs> like... I, I told Dave about this film mm-hmm. and I said he needed to watch the film. And Dave's always very busy. He's got a lot going on, blah, blah, blah. And I said it's three hours. He was like, oh, I don't know be. I was like, I know, mate. I was like, look, trust me. <laughs> watch the first 20 minutes of this film watch up to the credits and if it's not doing it for you just stop because it's not going to get any better for you and he was like mm-hmm. okay he rang me after 10 minutes to say to me like and he was like I'm really I'm trying really because I said to him like we can't talk about it because we have this thing sometimes where we end up talking about an entire film and then we don't end up talking about the podcast <laughs> and um he rang me and I said, no, I said to him, don't ring me. I said, don't ring me. Just watch it. Don't ring me. He rang me after 10 minutes to say, <laughs> B, this is a film. This is a film. <laughs> Mate, this is a film. And I was like, I know. Guys. And I said, I said, you haven't even, you haven't even scratched the surface. He said, I can't no. go back in. And then it's the same thing. I was getting text from him just going, what's going on? I don't, what? <laughs> and I said to him, like, the amount of films I see where the opening is the best part of the film and the film doesn't yeah. really get past the opening you know it never really gets to that high point and I said yeah. to Dave this isn't what I said this isn't one of those times he's like I don't understand how it can get any better I said trust me then he got to the sequence which <laughs> you get to one sequence at the end of the film 
and I must have watched that sequence like at least four times before I. And this is this is this is when I was watching it for the first time. Yeah. So normally I would just watch the film straight through and then I'll go back and watch the bits I like. I couldn't. No, 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 no. I couldn't do that. I yeah. watched this scene about four or five times. It is proper, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Oh, God. you texting me as well I was like I need to watch this film again and then I ended up texting my mom, and I was like you've got to watch this everybody I know needs to watch this film I was like I can't have this be like you know like an underrated gem like I need this to everybody needs to know this exists and within about two hours my mom had texted me and she was like what is this it's fucking phenomenal I was like oh no I, I was watching it on my own in the house and I, I was I was screaming in the house down greatest film I've ever seen and I'm only 20 minutes in yeah, like that opening sequence, like at the uh, at the police station, we got like, and then the credits come up, and we just looked at each other, and we were like, "Where is this going from here? Like, if this is where it's starting, where is it going from here?" And then it just went like up and up and up, and it just kept, going. and that like the fucking dance sequence at the party, with oh. I was losing my mind at the bit with the nacho, suspenders. Nacho. <laughs> yeah. I was absolutely losing my mind. I was like, Rich, I cannot. This is, I think it might be one of my new favourite films. Like, it's so good. I think we should wrap up now. I think we probably should. One probably of most of this won't make it in now. But <laughs> I just had to, yeah. So, yes. So, in in, in conclusion, RRR is a great film and everybody needs to watch it. It is awesome. It's something for everyone. Yeah. Honestly, it gets the Stace and Barry seal of approval and yes. then some. <laughs> and then some. Uh, right then. Call that an episode, eh, shall we? Yeah, let's, let's call do it. it. Let's do it. Hey, that was uh, Stace and Barry in the morning, season four, episode three. If you want to get in touch with us, you can do tweets at Geek Syndicate and at Stacey's Parlour or send an email to staceandbarry at gmail.com uh, and have a ruddy, lovely whatever day it is that you're listening to this don't forget to have a drink because it's hot have a little ice lolly keep yourself cool and hydrated and uh, that's right um, hydration is always important kids so stay yeah. some barry yeah Ooh. it is she says drinking a beer instead of a actual sensible cold drink in yeah. 24 degree heat anyway we <laughs> we love you all uh, well, we love most of you. We love some of you. Some. I love Barry. Uh, <laughs> bye, everyone. I love Stace. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs>